folks, Dave back here at Thunder Mesa Studio, and I hope you're all in the mood for more bridges because that's what we're doing again this week. I want to keep the momentum going after finishing the ON30 trestle down here on Calico Creek, so this week I'm going to be building the ON18 bridges and maybe some of the tunnel portals too. Now if you watched the earlier video in this series about laying the ON18 track levels, you might remember that I put in some uh, temporary bridges here uh, made out of 1 8 inch thick masonite. And um, I'm going to use those up here on the background bridges where they don't show as much. But what I've decided to do here on this foreground bridge is cut that piece of masonite out and replace it with some uh, stringers that I'm making from basswood over at the workbench. And here it is. Here are our bridge stringers. This is just uh, glued up from some 8x8s. Uh, I'm not replacing the ties on the uh, ON18 track. I think they look just fine the way they are, so I'm just going to glue these stringers right up underneath the flex track. There we go. And just uh, leave the clamps on there until the glue dries. Another thing I'm doing a little bit differently this time is I'm building these retaining wall abutments in place. So they'll match the contour of the scenery, look like they're old and rickety and worn out. And to do that, I'm just using some uh, good old copy stir sticks, which I've stained, and some uh, six by six posts that'll come down. I enjoy this sort of straight ahead modeling without any plan. And my goal here was to create some retaining walls that looked like they were thrown together and repaired many times with whatever lumber that might have been lying around. Now while we wait for the glue to dry on those uh, retaining walls, I can show you what I have in mind for the trestle bents. And once again, I've created a, a template or a jig by uh, cementing some uh, blue grid paper to some foam core that I can stick pins into. I've got my drawing on there, drawn the tallest trestle bent that I'm going to need, which is about um, seven and a half inches tall, high. Um, and I've put uh, that uh, packaging tape, clear packaging tape, over the top so the glue won't stick to the drawing. Uh, this is going to be a pile trestle. Now, the one I built before was, is a beam trestle. It just sits, it sits on footings. A pile trestle uses usually round piles, which are driven down into the ground or the stream bed uh, with a pile driver. And, uh, you know, they're just big logs. And they're more temporary looking, a little more spindly looking and more temporary looking than the, uh, the trestle I built before. Uh, they knew that these mines were boom and bust, so a, a pile trestle would be more likely than something, a more permanent structure. So to represent the piles themselves, I have some uh, 3 16 inch doweling that I will distress and stain. And the top sills will be eight by eights, rather petite. Um, these are seven feet long. But let me, uh, let me just uh, start to build one here and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna build the shorter one first. Now once again, I'm, I'm staining all of this wood before I begin, and this is a alcohol and India ink mixture, and it's, it's about 100 to 1. It's, it's a pretty, pretty thin. It doesn't take a lot of India ink in the alcohol to, uh, to make that stain. Uh, you don't want to get it too dark. But uh, before I stain it, too, I want to... Uh, Add some grain, some age and distress to these piles. So using a, a little wider tooth razor saw and just kind of running it up like that to add some texture and grain to the wood before I stain it. You can see what that looks like. Drop it in there, give it a swirl. And let it dry. Here I've got my uh, top sill already pinned into place so it doesn't move around. 
while I'm gluing the other pieces in. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and start with the center post. You can put a pin right down here at the bottom, put some pressure on it, almost like clamping it. There you go. Okay. Now this, uh, this bent sits on uneven ground, so I took some measurements. This side is longer, goes down a little bit lower. Important thing when you're working with round pieces is to make sure that cut angle matches because you can't tell because the sides aren't square. You have to kind of rotate it to get it where it's making good contact. And you can see this is a much more lightly built trestle than the last one I did. Only three posts holding it up because this is just for the ON18 mining tram and that's all it really needs. All right, and that's what we look like so far. Now I can put one of the sway braces on. All right, I'll let that dry, then I'll flip it over and add the sway brace on the other side. And carefully turn this over and uh, support it. You'll notice as uh, the whole construction of this trestle as I go, I'm being much less particular and precise than I was on the ON30 trestle, and that's because I want a funky, spindly look. Not everything's going to be perfect. It was thrown together quickly. That's, that's the story we're telling here with this model. Just kind of clamp that with my fingers until it's dry. So who can guess what's next? Well, if you guessed nut bolt washer castings, you win a prize. Not really, I don't have a prize for you, but congratulations, you were right. NBWs are next. Now a little watercolor weathering. Some of this burnt sienna. Make these look rusty. We mix some of the bird sienna with some cobalt blue. Nice dark gray. And go down here where these hit the ground and darken that because wood wicks water up from the ground. And so we're simulating that kind of staining down there. There we go. Now I think we can install that under our bridge deck. A little bit on each of the feet. A little bit more on top where it meets the bridge stringer. Alright, now I'll uh, camouflage these feet down here just like I did the bottom of this retaining wall with some dirt, rocks, and glue. Now I am ready to build the second trestle bent, and this one is quite a bit taller. This one is um, almost 30 scale feet tall. So it's going to have two sets of cross braces, and those are made with four by sixes. And then it's also going to have these lateral uh, braces about halfway up, uh, which are four by eights, and I've already um, pre-cut and pre-distressed and pre-stained all the lumber, so I am ready to start building right about now. Using exactly the same jig that we used before, just using more of it. Rotate that till I get a good square fit.
I'm going to use some more 4x6 material to add some crisscross diagonal bracing here between the vents. Just kind of, kind of thread these through here. Get a little water and clean off that extra glue. Now I'm on the, the very last steps of this bridge. I just went back and dry brushed all the track with some light tans and grayish tans to make it match the stained wood a little bit better. And now the final detail I'm gonna to add to finish the bridge is a couple of guard timbers on each side of the ties, just like that. And that'll finish off this one. I think I need to go handheld with the camera here just so you can see what I'm talking about for this next part. I need to build two more bridges and they're both on curves. They're both high up and they're both kind of stuck back in the corners here. So an interesting problem. This one in particular, this one uh, goes half in front of and half behind two big waterfalls that are going to go in. As you can see, I've already put in the, uh, the retaining walls on these. Did it the same way I did the other ones, just kind of went straight ahead and nothing too fancy, uh, a little bit simpler than I did before. But let me show you how I'm going to solve the problems of these bridges. Now, both of these bridges are made with some 1 8 inch thick masonite, makes it uh, fairly sturdy. Um, forms the curve. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is use some 1x6, which is very flexible. I'm going to stain it and basically laminate it onto the edges of these uh, masonite bridges. And they'll look just like wood when I'm done. So that is what I'm going to do next. Now fortunately, since only one side of these bridges are visible, only have to laminate one side of the masonite on each one. Save me a little bit of time and effort. And I'm using Eileen's tacky glue instead of yellow glue because it bites and holds more quickly. Now before some of you all get in the comments and uh, get all indignant and tell me real bridges aren't built this way, believe me, I know. <laughs> I know. It's a model bridge of a steel bridge that doesn't really look like wood built at a theme park. So I'm uh, allowing myself a little bit of artistic license. And we'll do the middle piece last. What I'm trying to do is line up the joints where the trestle bents will fall. This one back in here is a little hard to reach, but fortunately I can do it all in one piece. You know, I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> What's next? Well, I was just about to start putting these trestle bents in when I realized that uh, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to access this tunnel portal back here very easily or to be able to balance the track. So I've gone ahead and done all of that first. I've built the uh, added frame back here for this, and I'll be doing some more of those later on for these tunnels up here. But I've already installed that, and I've gone ahead and ballasted all this track uh, from the tunnel portal up to the bridge. So I can put those uh, trestle bents in without uh, worrying about being able to reach back there.
I built two more trestle bends in the same way using the same jig and adjusting the legs to fit the terrain. I also built a couple of low retaining walls to hold back the talus and hide the feet of the bends where they meet the scenery. Angled and lateral bracing was added using scale 4x6s, making sure to adjust for clearances for the track below. In the same way that I ballasted the track, real stone and dirt from the desert southwest was sifted on and glued into place with white glue diluted 3 to 1 with water. Now for this final bridge, I'm kind of throwing the rule book out the window. I've decided it's going to have a pair of angled vents coming down right into the rock wall here. And in order to do that, I'm pretty much going to have to build it right in place. The bridge is a cantilevered affair made from scale 8x8s and 4x6s, built purposefully asymmetrical to add to the overall funkiness. Well, with the addition of the final 2x4 guard timbers, I am pleased to say that these three ON18 bridges are now done. The, uh, this last one back in here was a bit of a bear. I actually had to turn the camera off and move it because I, it was in my way. <laughs> I couldn't actually reach the model to film with the camera on too. So. This is what it looks like all done here. And there'll be a couple of waterfalls back in there. It'll be a pretty, pretty spectacular little scene. And so the final thing I want to get done on this project today is these tunnel portals. And so let's go over to the workbench and uh, see how that's going to happen. Now when I first uh, built Calico Mountain out of foam, I did plan ahead a little bit. Uh, I made these patterns. Um, for the mine edits, for the tunnel portals for the ON18 line, and I used these to carve out the shape of the foam around the tunnel openings. So in theory, all I need to do now is build three of these following this pattern and install them over there on the mountain. We'll see how it goes. In practice, each of the tunnel portals had to be custom built in place, but it was still very helpful to have a pattern to follow and allowances for the 8x8 timbers pre-carved into the foam. And I think that is going to do it. At least for now. now. Get everything cleaned up and make sure the trains still run. That's going to do it for this time, amigos. Thanks for watching. Adios for now. <laughs>